Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Alice, and today I'll be summarising three key lessons from our ERC-funded research project, which sought to explore whether explosive volcanism can leave measurable mercury signals in the sedimentary record. Our focus here is on core CO1215 from Lake Prespa. This core offers a continuous record of environmental change over the past 90,000 years, with each centimetre equating to roughly 25 years of sedimentation. It also contains 11 tephra layers, all originating from Italian eruptions with varying magnitudes. So this record presents an excellent opportunity to study how volcanism, lake chemistry, catchment hydrology and regional climate can all influence sedimentary mercury concentrations. By reconstructing 90,000 years of mercury deposition in this lake, we can reflect on three key lessons. First, that lake sediments may lack sufficient resolution to capture mercury signals produced by short-lived eruptions. This figure presents the mercury to total organic carbon content ratio in orange. We use this ratio to discern whether increased mercury concentrations are the product of increased carbon burial or derived from an external source. And this ratio is presented relative to tephra layers identified in the core, solar insulation values and sulfur concentrations as measured in ice cores from Greenland. We can see that significant peaks in mercury do not consistently coincide with tephra layers, nor atmospheric sulfur loading. Even if the eruptions that produced them themselves did produce a substantial amount of mercury, the signal may be muted if the record lacks sufficient resolution to capture short-lived mercury enrichments. However, we also consider the possibility that individual eruptions may not emit enough mercury for a signal to be retained within the sediment. This hypothesis requires further investigation as a threshold beyond which eruption-derived mercury signals may no longer be detectable in the environment is unclear. Our record also suggests that regional factors such as lake chemistry, catchment hydrology and climate more strongly influence how mercury is cycled through the environment. From a volcanological perspective, this may seem like a disappointing outcome, but I would argue that Lake Prespacor has already taught us a great deal and there are plenty more hypotheses for a test moving forward. Although these are mostly related to paleoclimatic and environmental processes, they will help us to better understand the sedimentary conditions under which mercury signals may be favourably preserved. Also, examining further cores that contain geochemically distinct tephra layers could help decipher whether the lack of a measurable post-eruption mercury signal is instead more the result of volcanic processes such as magma composition and eruptive style. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference.